what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Yeah, I hope you lot are doing well and happy new year, guys. What a year it's been, certainly for me, and definitely the channel started Football Therapy just before the season started, or thereabouts. We've hit over 30,000 subscribers before, well, before the halfway point in the Premier League season. And I'm going into 2020 with over 30k subs on my YouTube channel. A superb year for me, so thank you to everyone who subscribed and supports the channel and the content. So, happy new year to you. And you know what? It's been a superb decade for Chelsea. Undoubtedly the most successful English team. Premier Leagues, Champions League, Europa Leagues, domestic cups. Superb scenes for Chelsea Football Club in this decade. Chelsea can look back and smile over the last 10 years and their success and look forward to 2020 which will be a completely different, I don't know, prospect approach for Chelsea Football Club moving forward. Sure, we're all hoping to spend big, more on that in a moment, but the whole Frank Lampard revolution, think just like five, six years ago, Frank Lampard was playing in the Chelsea team, now he's managing the Chelsea team. Just superb scenes, very exciting, you know, ups and downs, but that's the Chelsea way, and we move. Anyway, if you are, of course, new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, I'd urge you to do so. Please do hit the bell notifications icon as well, and why not like the video, and oh yeah, I've got new channel art. Hope you've seen that, and uh, you like it. <laughs> All right, today's video is a Chelsea news video. I'm talking about a few stuff that's going through the rags at the minute and on social media. And just generally the stories that have been going around the internet to see you guys through into the new year. Whether I'll do a video on New Year's Day, I'm not sure. I mean, Chelsea are playing Brighton. If we slap them about and I'm not so hungover, maybe I will do a video. Who knows? We will talk about the Brighton game in a moment as well. Let's start on Chelsea strikers. Tammy Abraham has been in contract talks with the club for a long time now. Probably ever since he put on the number nine shirt at the beginning of the season and started scoring a few goals. Now you can either say, well the number nine shirt doesn't mean anything at Chelsea anymore. It's a cursed shirt, you wanted it. They were like, all right, you can have it, but you know, it probably wasn't a big deal. Not like getting the number 10 shirt at Chelsea after Eden Hazard. But Lampard and Jody showed great faith in Tammy Abraham and gave him the number nine shirt. And obviously he's been delivering ever since. Even if he goes two, three games without a goal, He's leaving everything on the pitch, he's playing very well, he's very passionate and he's very devoted to the cause from minute 1 to 90. But he's a bunch of Premier League goals and he scored in the Champions League as well against you know top tier opposition. So the young forward has been excellent for Chelsea and he does genuinely look like he's getting better and better. 2020 is probably going to be a superb year for him and he's hugely important for Chelsea. So the Blues need to lock him down to a new long term contract which is stalled at the moment. Now, no one should really be worried because he loves Chelsea. It's the perfect place for him right now, playing under Frank, Jody and Joe, as well as just being his boyhood club and playing with his mates, essentially. So, you would back Tammy and the club to sort out a deal. I mean, if they're giving Callum Hudson-Odoi 120k a week, you can't imagine he'd be asking for any more than that. But the thing is, Tammy Abraham has put in the graft as well. This is not me slating Callum Hudson-Odoi. I think he probably is worth 120k in terms of his talent, um, you know, long-term deal being signed. But Tammy Abraham, not only is he talented and he's delivering really, really well for Chelsea, he's also put in the graft and he's gone out on loan a few times and done really well on those loans. He's really earned his place and therefore his wage and a good contract. Excuse me. So contract talks have stalled, whether that's for a monetary reason or other, I don't know. Now other could be Chelsea are very much in for another striker. But what kind of tier striker? What, like a G Rube replacement, rotational striker? Chelsea are very heavily linked with Timo Werner. Now, Tammy Abraham reluctant to sign a new contract. Maybe, maybe he knows this is going to happen. Again, this is just Jan speculating here. But maybe he's like, right, Chelsea are going to sign a big striker. Maybe I can't get too frustrated because it's a club has the right to want a big club has the right to want two elite strikers. Really, it's Batshuayi that should be upset. <laughs> but maybe he wants assurances in his contract for game time or to be the number one. But if Chelsea are really genuinely looking in to bring Timo Werner, who's about the same age, probably a few months older, he will want assurances, I imagine, but Timo Werner has got absolutely maddening numbers. Now, they've both put in incredible 
shifts the last few years. Obviously, Tammy Abraham has been down in the championship. The Timo Werner has been scoring goals in the top flight in Germany for a while now. Both their form this season is really, really good. But Timo Werner has completely gone bang. He scored so many goals. So you can understand why Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United, and now Real Madrid want Timo Werner. Apparently, Real Madrid are desperate to sign him and they're willing to do a swap with Luka Jovic and even offer money on top. Remember, they spent 60 million on Luka Jovic, but for some reason, he didn't even really get game time, but they just don't fancy him, which is so, so peculiar. So, I mean, everyone wants Timo Werner because of what he's doing and what he has done for a few years. So they're like, look, have our 60 million pound striker with a bit on top, just give us, give us Werner. Which might actually be a hugely tempting deal for Leipzig. Anyway, let's see what happens. But with Timo Werner, if he's looking at Chelsea and Real Madrid, he'll see at Chelsea the golden boy of the academy is doing well up front. And he'll see Real Madrid, sure Benzema's old, but Hazard and Benzema have got good chemistry. Zidane absolutely loves Benzema. He probably wouldn't be starting immediately. Maybe not even for like 18 months. So it's a difficult decision for the young German, but we'll have to see what happens. Chelsea are legitimately interested, and there apparently is a release clause between 30 and 60 million pounds. All affordable if you think about the money that's been spent in the Premier League. Watch this space, I'll keep you updated on Chelsea's January signings. Other news in January signings, still the same with Alonso. Emerson potential exit. A really exciting high profile transfer is Chelsea player Danny Drinkwater might go to Aston Villa. <laughs> and the rumours of Giroud to West Ham have surfaced again, which to be honest would kind of make sense. Maybe Moisey, who's just come in, <laughs> which is really obviously very exciting for the Hammers. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Giroud to West Ham would make sense. He gets to stay in London, doesn't have to move his family, gets to play at a relatively high level to keep Deschamps happy to lead the line for France. That kind of makes sense. Right, let's talk a little bit about the Brighton game. Quickly on Christian Pulisic. Everyone wondered why he was left out of the squad last time out against Arsenal. Apparently, he had a tight hamstring, said Lampard or some Chelsea coaching staff, and it was like, oh, a slight hamstring injury. And obviously, I'm sure a lot of you have seen on Twitter, Yahoo Soccer, they posted a story about Christian Pulisic's hamstring injury. He went down in the comments, tweeted a reply, I'm 100% fully fit, thanks for your concern. So, drama. People thinking, oh, is Frank lying about his hamstring? Oh, you know, is Pulisic annoyed that he's been left out when he's not injured and now he's trying to get a bit, you know, bit back at Lampard and say, no, I'm completely fine, like kind of Meza Ozil was doing under Emery. Probably not. Frank Lampard loves Christian Pulisic. He said he always maintained he was very good, and obviously when Pulisic was in scintillating form, he was like, yes, I knew this, he's going to be a huge player for us, he's got a great attitude, everyone's fine. Do you know what this could be? This could be Frank Lampard arresting him for Brighton, because he's like, right, we need someone to be a ball carrier, dribbler for this game, um, I fancy Pulisic to do something here, I'm going to arrest him, but I don't want, I want to be strategic and not let people know that I'm resting him for the game, so he just comes out and says that. You know, it's gamesmanship between managers, they do it all the time. I'm speculating, but if that's the truth, he'll be a bit annoyed that Pulisic's come out and said this. Like, no, you're starting the Brighton game, mate, you're just not supposed to say anything. Anyway, I don't know, that could happen. I kind of do expect him to start the Brighton game. Chelsea would need rotation. Um, you, you know, I, Chelsea, Frank Lampard wants top four. It's not a breeze anymore, he wants top four. He will start Willian. Willian's such an important player for Chelsea this season where he's not scoring and assisting the way he played against Arsenal the breakaway goal is integral he's just right he knows what to do at the right time he retains possession well even if it slows down the game sometimes he's just such a safe and important player for Lampard so I see him and Tammy Abraham starting and maybe Pulisic on the left wing then maybe Mount drops to midfield for the extra creativity or he becomes a bench player like Callum Hudson-Odoi I guess but Hudson-Odoi came on against Arsenal and looked really good maybe Brighton's a perfect opportunity for him to start. I mean, he didn't start that game. Imagine if Frank Lampard starts hudson Adoy and Christian Pulisic on both flanks against Brighton. That would be exciting. But Brighton are no mugs. They're in good form and they're at home. Now, I know Chelsea are better away from home, but still, underestimate Brighton at your own peril. Graham Potter's doing bits at the moment. And Chelsea will have to be on their A game to secure three points away. Still, I do back Chelsea to do it. I don't back them to get a clean sheet. I never do at the moment until they're really, really settled and look like they've got a few in a row or certainly a bunch in a part of the season. Maybe Chelsea win this. 
2-1. And let's be honest, you'll take it. The most intriguing thing for me in this game is what Lampard's lineup will be. You know, you imagine it will be a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 formation that he won't go back to the 3-4-3 again. Anyway, we'll soon find out. Like I said, I'm not sure I'll do a video tomorrow. We'll have to see how I feel and what's going on in terms of Chelsea results and Chelsea news. But hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed this video today. And if you have, please do like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Remember to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. And Happy New Year. Enjoy the football. I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby